أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين بارئ الخلائق أجمعين باعث الأنبياء والمرسلين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف خلقه خاتم أنبيائه سيد رسله نبينا وحبيب قلوبنا وشفيع ذنوبنا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المنتجبين واللعنة الدائمة على أعدائهم أجمعين من أول يوم ظلمهم إلى قيام يوم الدين Respected viewers, brothers and sisters, السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته The Holy 11th Imam from the ship of salvation and the illuminating beacon of light Imam Al-Hasan ibn Ali al-Askari al-Zaki Salawatullahi wa salamhu alayh Lived a short lifespan of 28 years Yet, of course, there are important areas for us to reflect upon and to understand and apply in our lives when it comes to his teachings. Despite the oppression of Bani Abbas and the tight system around the life of the Imam, he was still able to respond to misconceptions. He was able to spread the teachings he was still able to influence many people as the examples and narrations have told us and have presented for us. As an example, there was um, a kind of a philosopher uh, in Iraq. His name was Al-Ishaq Al-Kindi. And he wrote a book or he was about to somehow distribute this particular um, book that he had authored, which argued that the Qur'an was full of contradictions, that there are verses which contradict other verses. And this would have placed a lot of doubt in the hearts and in the minds of people and it sh would have shaken their beliefs. When Imam al-Askari was made aware of this, he spoke to one of the students of al-Ishaq al-Kindi. Notice the method of the Imam السلام, how he wanted to um, keep the focus uh, on the way to influence Al-Ishaq Al-Kindi and not just to somehow rebuke him and reprimand him and say this is what you're doing is wrong but to approach it intellectually using rationality that the Imam السلام, said to his student he said why don't you get close to this individual, your teacher? Be kind and to him and then he, you will win his heart. And then say to him this. Say to him that if someone was to come to you and say something, would you understand what that person has said exactly like someone else would? Would you? Because you and I as human beings, we will, uh, we will definitely... Uh, comprehend the message and receive it in different ways. Certain expressions and certain statements and ways in which people come up with sentences may be taken by you and I differently to other human beings. That's the nature of mankind. When Imam was explaining this to the student, he said, tell him, how about if it's the word of God? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the Holy Quran. It is immaculate. It is error-free. It is infallible. Yet it is his words. And therefore, if the words of human beings is understood differently, then it is likely that the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would be too. This student did exactly what Imam al-Askari wanted. Went to his teacher, became close to him, and presented this argument. At that moment, Ishaq al-Kindi was moved. And he said, who informed you of this? Who taught you this? This student would not disclose until he found out Ishaq al-Kindi would found out that this was from the Imam alayhi salam. He tore the book and decided of course not to publish it and agreed with what the Imam alayhi salam had mentioned. And this highlighted to us 
the important role that the Imams السلام, had in terms of the propagation and the dispelling of the misconceptions. Another misconception that existed was that in Surah Man Ra'a, in Samar Ra, we are told the narrations that they wanted some uh, rain. They performed this, what is known as istisqa, the prayer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for rain. And one Christian monk would come out and pray to God and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for rain and it would fall. Yet the people were shaken. Their beliefs were somehow affected. He said, how is it that a Christian monk asks and rain falls, whereas we are asking and nothing happens? Imam السلام, was kept in a mu'askar. Mu'askar is more of like a, a military camp. It's like a prison, but more of a detention place. That's why he's known as Al-Askari, or the 10th and the 11th Imam are known as the Askariyain. So they went to him and they said, well, the only person who can resolve this is Al-Hasan ibn Ali. They came to him and they said that this is the impact that we're having about this particular individual. He said that according to the riwayah, this man is holding a bone of a, of a prophet and he is asking Allah for the sake of this bone and he's interceding through this bone of a prophet that he has somehow obtained and that's why rain falls. Take this away from him and this will not happen. Indeed they took it away, this did not happen and the narration tells us that Imam السلام, himself came, he prayed to Allah and Allah Taala, of course sent the rain and people were joyous that the uh, supplication of the Imam, peace and blessings be upon him, was of course answered by the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala. The narrations inform us of the challenges that the Imam al-Askari, peace and blessings be upon him, had faced in terms of the spirituality and the lack of religiosity and the following of the path and the teachings of the Holy Prophet as well as the Quran of course as taught by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam was strife and therefore you find Imam al-Askari alayhi salam many narrations, many ways in any shape or form despite once again a reminder that he was not permitted in, in, in normal ways that we are accustomed today to speak to people, to deliver sermons and so on Yet there were important methods that the Imam utilized, in, including sending letters to his wakala, to the fuqaha, to others, to highlight some areas. And uh, that's how we have this tafsir that is attributed to Imam al-Askari alayhi salam. One area, of course, was to remind people about the importance of building for the afterlife and to somehow challenge and to dispel the notion in the minds of people about this dunya because of the spread of materialism, the attachment to this world, uh, the lack of practicing of the faith, the lack of preparation for the hereafter. And therefore the Imam alayhi salam, there is a, one nar there is a narration that points to the 11th holy Imam, peace and blessings be upon him, informing people of this particular story to bring the notion, the idea closer to their minds. The story is that a traveler, an individual, is traveling in the desert on his way somewhere and he comes across a city built somewhere within his journey. He enters to try and get some rest. As soon as he enters, the people of that particular city welcome him and explained to him that he has indeed today become his, their king. They have chosen him to become their leader. He expresses surprise. I've just come to rest or to get some kind of refreshments. I have not come for uh, the kingdom. They said we have this practice every three years. The king that rules this area is changed. And the first person to come from outside the city and enters the gate on a particular day is chosen as the king for this, these people. 
However, they told him that the kingdom has conditions. One condition is that after three years, the king is extradited, taken out of this particular area to an island, an island whereby they are left there and uh, this island is quite far and it is difficult for them to come back to the shore but that's how they should know or at least this is given to them at the beginning. But for three years they are kings. Afterwards they are shipped or taken to that island. This individual, of course, Imam alayhi salam is trying to highlight the importance of this world and akhirah. He says to them, he says this man would, according to the riwayah, it is narrated that he said that this individual accepted. And one of the first things that he did was to prepare that area, that island. So he commanded that he had taken there. He started to build the palaces. He started to place the facilities. He started to encourage people to go and live there so that by the end of the three years, he was delighted and very encouraged to go to that particular island and live there. Different to other kings, other kings when they reach the end of the three years, they are begging, they're saying, please don't take us, we don't want to go there, whereas this man was eager to go to the place that he had prepared, that he had spent the last three years building, doing whatever he can to make the most enjoyable experience and place of abode. Imam al-Askari, peace and blessings be upon him, would say that this is a parable of this world and akhirah. This is a similitude. In which way? In that this individual prepared and he was eager and keen to go. Yet of course, the reality today is that people have not prepared for their akhirah and that's why they don't want to go to the hereafter. Abu Dharr al-Ghafari, he says people are afraid of death because they have not built for themselves palaces or areas of peace and tranquility in Akhirah. All they've done is placed all their efforts in this world. Therefore, they don't want to leave what is they have done here for themselves to some, something which is Bayt al-Kharab, perhaps areas of ruin. They have not really conducted or understood the philosophy of this dunya and the preparation, that the fact that uh, ad dunya mazra'atul akhirah, this world is the place where we harvest and we plant crops for what? For the akhirah. Hence, you find that Imam Salawatullahi wa salamu encouraged people to. Um, reflect about this but not only he was saying that of course he was the crystallization of piety god consciousness um, there are many people who have come forward and spoken about that he was abadu uh, the most devout of abadu ahlu zamanah the most devout of uh, the people worshippers of his time he was somebody who uh, reminded people about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when they saw him, when they were next to him. They would like to be next to him as a representative and a chosen man of the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala. Insha'Allah, we will continue the discussion surrounding the illustrious life of Imam al-Hasan al-Askari al-Zaki. Salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayhi. وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين وصل اللهم وسلم وبارك على سيد المرسلين محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين